Sixers fans, welcome back. This one's for you. All right, look, I'm going to make this video real quick. You can tell by the title of the film we're talking Zach Levine trades to Philadelphia. Before jumping into it, I want to say, get me to 300 subscribers. My 2021 resolution when it comes to YouTube is to get 1,000 subscribers. It's to get monetized. It's to try to make some, some money doing this because I love doing it and I, I want to do it more. Um, I love the comments you guys give me. I love everything about this this you know, journey that I've kind of started with you guys and I'm here for it. So help me get to 300. We can be like, this is Sparta, you know, 300 is a great movie. If you haven't seen it, I'm upset with you if you haven't, but let's talk Zach Levine trades before jumping into it too. I want to say that I'm not going to tell you really whether or not I think the Sixers should do it or shouldn't do it. I'm here to tell you more of the pros and cons of doing a deal like this. I want to play devil's advocate. Uh, I have full faith in the God, the almighty Daryl Morey. I'm naming my son or daughter, hopefully son, uh, Morey Melly. Regardless of the gender, I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn what my wife says either. She made the mistake of marrying me and having my baby. So we're naming it Morey. And it sounds perfect. Morey Melly. I digress. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, I've seen a lot of deals right now because Chicago is struggling. Chicago is not a good team, and Zach Levine simply doesn't fit their timeline of youth and the movement that they're doing right now. Chicago has been playing better, for sure, don't get me wrong, but they're still not a playoff team, and I think what is best for them is to trade Zach Levine. I think what's best for Zach Levine is to get traded. Um, that being said, I've seen Philadelphia as a very popular destination for a guy like Zach Levine. He's a perfect fit. He's not a playmaker. He is a very good scorer, but he doesn't demand the ball all the time to score. So let's jump into it. The deal I've seen more than anything is Zach Levine to Philadelphia. Chicago receives Matisse Thibel, Danny Green, and two future unprotected first-round picks. Let me start off with the cons. Because every persuasive paper I ever had to write in college always says, start off with the cons. That's what I'm doing, all right? You're welcome, Shippensburg University education. I'm using it, finally, for the first time in my life. Um, so the cons are that this Sixers team has really yet to grow together and play together. You really even think about last year, it was a season cut short. Tobias Harris hasn't really had a full season as a Sixer, which is wild because we've had him for going on three years now. There is the idea that constant shakeup is just not good for a team's chemistry. And by trading a guy like Danny Green could be taking away some veteran leadership. It's taking away a winner. It's taking a guy who has been to championships, who knows how to make a team work together off of a team. And that's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of things Danny Green brings to this team that isn't shown up on a box score. It's not shown up on a stat sheet. It's not talked about enough during interviews. It's not an ESPN topic. Danny Green will get you eight points a game with 35% from three, but he brings that championship DNA, something that Philadelphia has not had in recent years, really in a long time. Zach Levine, I love the kid. He balls and he's a perfect fit. I'll talk about it later, but he doesn't have that. He's not a winner. He, doesn't, he hasn't been on a winning team. So one could argue that it may just shake up the team's chemistry in a very negative way. We're six and one right now. What's the point of flipping assets? You know, one could argue that. On the flip side, one could argue flip the assets because you're getting a borderline all-star who is a seamless, perfect fit alongside a primary playmaker in Ben Simmons. It will free up Zach Levine so much to let him do his thing. It kind of gives us a fourth quarter closer. If Tobias Harris kind of digresses a little bit um, and regresses a little bit, shit. Ugh, I'm not going to cut this out. I'm just going to go through it. This is the real Greg. Um, if Tobias Harris doesn't continue with the pace that he's playing right now, um, Zach Levine could bring that fourth quarter scoring, could bring that go-get-a-bucket type of scoring that Philadelphia just has really wanted, we've needed for a long time, um, ever since we lost Jimmy Butler, and that could be that. And at the face value of this trade, Matisse Thibel, Danny Green, and two first-round picks for a, a, a borderline all-star, a top 15, 20 scorer in the NBA of Zach Levine, I'm doing that. I'm doing that. A starting lineup with Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, Zach Levine, Tobias Harris, and Embiid is elite. It's elite. And it's not like what we would be saying last year of elite of Al Horford because Zach Levine's not playing out of position. 
Zach Levine is a good shooter. He's a great scorer. He will only make Embiid and Ben Simmons better players. And if you look at it, Danny Green, three-point percentage versus Zach Levine, three-point percentage, you're not losing much, if anything. You're not losing much, if anything. It's only addition when it comes to talent. Matisse Thibel, I like the kid, but he's he's older than you know most people in their second years. He isn't really going to progress that much more, it seems like, and he just hasn't been great. I think he's a great clubhouse guy. I think a lot of players like him, which could be a con, you know? Taking away some of your friends for a guy that you don't know, that's going to take shots away from you. You don't know. You have no idea sometimes what traits can do to a team like that. And especially with a, guy, with a team that's just rolling right now, I don't think this is a deal that would be made anytime soon, for sure. But I don't think Daryl Morey is going to become complacent. I don't think he's going to become complacent. I think uh, he's not going to be afraid to go out during the deadline. And if he sees we need to make a move, go out and make a move. And when you just look at what we're giving up for what we're getting talent-wise, this is a sure thing, sure fire deal. Danny Green on an expiring contract. Two first-round picks, so they're probably going to be closer to 30 than they are to 15. And Matisse Thibel, who... Let's be honest, wouldn't it be playing much if Korkmaz wasn't out? I'm doing that deal. I'm doing that deal. Zach Levine is a legit talent. But as I've said multiple times in this video, there is fear that comes along with a deal like this. Danny Green brings a lot to a team that teams need to win. He brings a lot to a team that just isn't shown up in a box score. Matisse Thibel is a fantastic clubhouse guy. He understands his role. That is a humongous thing with why the Sixers are succeeding right now. It's because players aren't just playing well, but they're not trying to do too much. They understand their role. They are playing their role to the best of their ability. It's kind of like the Clippers um, to two years ago, three years ago. When they had Tobias Harris and they were supposed to be bad and ended up being like a playoff team. That's what this team reminds me of, but even better, obviously, given the talent that we have. We don't have guys going out there trying to be superstars when they're not. It's And it's, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. It really, really is. That's why I think people are just, they're, 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 they're kind of freaking out about Ben Simmons not averaging 20 points a game, but... He's playing his role perfectly for this team. He's running this team at his pace. This is his offense, and it's, it's, it's perfect. We don't need him scoring 20 points a game when we are more successful when he scores 13, 14 points a game. Sure, it's not going to look as sexy, but what do you want? What would you rather want? Ben Simmons to be All-NBA third team, All-NBA second team, or an NBA championship? I'm taking an NBA championship. Right now, the Philadelphia 76ers are a just a well-oiled machine. They're a well-oiled machine that have 10 guys right now that understand their roles perfectly. And they play their roles perfectly from the top to the bottom. Nobody cares who scores as long as somebody scores. I said that in my last video. And if that means Tobias Harris is going to come out and give you 25 a game because he's who's hot right now, let it be. But when Embiid is the one that's hot and Tobias Harris cools down, let Embiid give you 25 points a game. When Ben Simmons is feeling aggressive and he's starting to score a little bit, let Ben Simmons get you 25. That's just how it is right now. The Sixers are really, really good. They're not like they have been in the past. And I'm not just saying that because they're 6-1. I'm saying that because the offense is different. There is a totally different philosophy that guys are buying into right now. And the Zach Levine trade could alter things. I don't know if it will but it could alter things. Danny Green understands his role better than anybody. Matisse Thibel understands his role better than anybody. But at the same time, talent for talent, this is a sure thing deal you do 11 times out of 10. It just comes to the point of, are we going to be desperate enough to do this? I don't know. I think either way, I won't be upset. I love that this trade doesn't have to do with my man, Shake Milton. 
It doesn't have to do with Tyrese Maxey. It doesn't have to do with Tobias Harris. Like, this is a really, really, really good deal. I would legitimately call this a steal, and I wouldn't even think this was real if I didn't... It rhymed. God, I'm good. I would, I would think this wasn't real if I didn't see Bulls fans proposing this offer saying how they would do it. Chicago, be my guest. These are my pros and cons. I'm not really saying if I want to do it or I don't. I just want to show you both sides of the coin. Peace out. Go Sixers. Video is going to be dropped tonight. Also, before you go, before you go, um, I might drop like half halftime report videos if that's something you're interested in. Because like I know, I don't know about you guys, but like when it becomes like like halftime during a Sixers game and I'm just like, just like fiending for more basketball of the Sixers, I'm like, yeah, I kind of want to make a video. So maybe I'll do like a five minute halftime report um, during the games. Let me know in the comment section below if that's something that interests you. That would be really cool to hear from you guys um, if you would watch it or not. Let me know. Peace out. Go Sixers. Let's get that dub tonight.